All right, here we go. Number 14 in our college algebra homework number five in my lab math. It says solve. And this time we have a cubic inequality. So in general, we could say this is a polynomial inequality. More specifically, it's a cubic inequality. And so I've got that written down up here in our window. Let's get started. To solve a polynomial inequality, you do need to make it, in this case, less than or equal to zero. And so I'm going to bring my 16x over. That's going to give me 3x cubed minus 8x squared minus 16x less than or equal to zero. And then I notice that all three of these terms have a common factor of x. They all have an x in common. I'm going to factor out an x to begin with. So that'll leave me a 3x squared minus 8x. And then the 16 is going to lose his x and be just 16. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to try to factor this trinomial in the parentheses, this quadratic trinomial. And let's see, 3, 8, and 16, they don't have a common factor. I would have took it, taken it out with the x if they would have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the 3r method for factoring and see if I can get this trinomial to factor, okay? So let's, let's see how this goes here. So the first r says to remove. I'm going to remove the 3, and then I'm going to multiply it by the 16. Let's see here. 3 times 6 is 18. That's going to be 48. And then we're going to see if this will factor as a standard trinomial. So the signs are going to be different. x and x for the x squared. And then I'm going to need numbers that multiply to make 48. That subtract and make 8. Let's make a little list and see what we've got here. Uh, obviously, we know that 16 times 3 is 48. We just did it. But 16 minus 3 is 13, not 8. All right, so let's move up the chain and try 4. 4 times 12 is 48. 12 minus 4 is, oh, there it is. 12 minus 4 is 8. So I need 12 and 4, and I need the 4 to be plus and the 12 to be minus because I need negative 8. 4 minus 12 is negative 8. All right, so now I've found my factors. I need to remember that I'm using the 3R method. So now the second R is replace. So remember, I removed the 3. Now I need to replace it in front of each x. And the third r is reduce. OK, so in the first set of parentheses, can I reduce 3 and 4? And the answer is no. So that's going to come down. In the second set of parentheses, can I reduce 3 and 12? Yes, I can. Those will both divide by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1x. 4 divided, I'm sorry, 12 divided by 3 is 4. And then if you look at what we've done here, we've taken this trinomial that we needed to factor using the 3R method. We now have it factored uh, correctly. And so now we have 1, 2, 3 factors. Every one of those factors is going to produce a critical point. So if I set each one of those equal to 0, we can see that x equals 0 is a critical point. 3x plus 4 equal to 0. I need to solve that for x. Moving the 4 over and dividing by 3. Says that x is going to be negative 4 thirds. And then for the other factor, we're going to have x minus 4 equal to 0. Moving the 4 over gives me x is 4. So 1, 2, 3 critical points. And so now I need to go to the number line. 
with my critical points. Make sure you put them in the right order. Negative four-thirds first. It's the smallest. And then zero. And then four. And let's remember this inequality. Remember originally it was less than or equal to. So that means that these critical points are going to have solid dots because it had the equal to. And then I'm going to need test points to determine which sections to shade. All right, so I need a number less than negative four-thirds. Uh, that's negative four-thirds is negative one and a third, so maybe negative two. And then I need a number that's between negative four-thirds and zero. Negative one would be there. A number between zero and four, maybe two. And then a number bigger than four, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, anything bigger than four. Uh, let's go six. Well, it doesn't really matter. Whatever you want to pick. And then I'm going to take these red numbers. These are my test points. And I'm going to go all the way back up to here where I have uh, the cubic less than or equal to zero, and I'm going to plug those test points in to see if I get a true or a false statement, okay? Now listen, you also could plug back in here. That might be a little bit easier. You know what? I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go here to plug in and test. So what is our first test point? It's negative two. So plugging in for x, whoops, I want to use blue. Negative two, uh, 3 times negative 2 plus 4. And negative 2 minus 4. We want to know, is that less than or equal to 0? And so we need to work that out and see if we get a true or a false. That's going to be negative 2 times... Let's see, that's going to be negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. And then notice what we've got. We've got a negative times a negative times a negative. Overall, that's going to be a negative number, which is less than or equal to 0. Negative numbers are less than or equal to 0. That's true. And that means that everything in this section is going to shade. Now also remember that I mentioned in the previous problem that these trues, the trues and falses, they normally alternate. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that this negative 1 is going to be false, the 2 is going to be true, and the 6 is going to be false. And so just to prove that I'm probably right here, we're going to go ahead and evaluate negative 1 and see what we get. Negative 1, 3 times negative 1 plus 4, negative 1 minus 4, less than or equal to 0. Remember what I'm doing is I'm plugging back into this right here, this factored form. Every x gets replaced with negative 1, and then I'm going to see if that's true or false. So negative 1 times negative 3 plus 4, that's positive 1 and negative 5, and that is a negative times a positive times a negative, which is going to be, overall, is going to be a positive, which is not less than or equal to 0. Positive numbers are not less than or equal to 0. That's false. And so I was right. It is going to alternate. Let's keep checking, though. Let's check the 2 for the test point, okay? So that's going to be 2. 3 times 2 plus 4, 2 minus 4, and that's going to be 2 times 6 plus 4 is 10, 2 minus 4 negative 2, positive times a positive times a negative is negative, and is a negative less than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. That is true. And so that means we're going to shade that section of the number line. And again, just to prove that everything is correct here, we're going to check the 6. 
6, 3 times 6 plus 4, 6 minus 4, that's going to be 6 times, 3 times 6 is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 6 minus 4 is 2, positive times a positive times a positive is positive. Positive numbers are not less than or equal to zero, and so that is false. Now then, that we have the entire number line tested and shaded, we can write the interval notation. So I'm going to do this right here in green. It's going to be everything from negative infinity. Do you see that? This is going to negative infinity up to negative four-thirds with a bracket. Union, picking up again at zero, and going to four. This is going to be our interval notation. Now to prove that, I'm going to show that down here in Desmos. I have the original polynomial inequality. If I turn that on, you can see that we have shading here from minus infinity up to, and it's hard to tell in Desmos, but up to some number and then picking up at some other number and going to, well, some other number. So to check and see what those numbers are, I'm going to graph x equal negative 4 thirds. And then if I turn that off and on, you can see that that's right at the edge of that shading. So that number is correct as far as that endpoint. And then I'm going to say x equal 0. And if I turn that off and on, can you see that that's flashing here? So that is correct. And then if I do the last critical point, x equal 4, and do you see if I turn that off and on that that's at the other end point? So those <clears throat> values, plugging in those vertical lines, they prove that my shading is correct and I have my interval notation up here correct. And so let's plug that in and see if my lab math likes it. Everything from negative infinity up to negative four thirds, bracket from the keyboard, union bracket, everything from zero to four. And check it. Man, that was a long one. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Or you can text me. And thanks for watching.